Oh, Godzilla, King of the Monsters. How I love the monster side of your story, but how I must criticize the human side of your story. Let's get the obvious out of the way. The monsters are incredible. They feel huge, and they look awesome. In fact, you know, if you saw my previous video, it should go without saying that this movie looks fantastic. This movie introduces King Ghidorah, who is probably the best antagonist the Monsterverse has ever had. The acting is pretty decent. Kyle Chandler is good as Mark Russell. Millie Bobby Brown is good as Madison Russell. Vera Farmiga is decent as Evil Mom. Charles Dance makes for a pretty good human antagonist. Although it would be nice if he had something to do after Ghidorah was released. The monster battles are visceral and exciting. Look. All the stuff you expect to be good in one of these movies is good, arguably even better than usual. So you may be asking what my issue with this movie is. It's the human side of the plot. Don't get me wrong, I really enjoy this movie. I think it's a really fun watch, but I can't ignore some bad writing. I don't just mean like clunky dialogue, I'm talking fundamental flaws within this movie's story. For example, the villain wants to unleash Ghidorah to kill a lot of the population because he believes humanity is the reason for Earth's eventual downfall. It's sort of like Thanos in Avengers Infinity War, except the thing is, Thanos at least had a controlled amount of death. He just unleashes a monster and expects, oh yeah, this will only kill a certain amount of people. It's like, what did you expect to happen when Ghidorah tries to take over the planet? Why does Madison decide to stay with Evil Mom and Alan Jonah when she can easily just go to Mark? Like, also, how is she able to escape from the villains as easy as she does? Like, what, was, was no one guarding her? Oh, we have this kid who's heavily against our plans, but, you know, we'll leave her unguarded. We'll let her just hang around the base, unmonitored. Also, who built this giant temple for Godzilla? Like, <laughs> I, think, I think it would take a long time to build that. There's also a line in this movie that goes along the lines of, Oh my god, Zilla. Also, why does Monarch just have a nuke? Like, it's just, they just have a nuke for some reason. Is it just the Godzilla first aid kit? Don't get me wrong, there are things about the human plot I really like. I like Mark Russell's character arc. I like um, the two twin ladies, they're cool. I liked seeing Houston Book Brooks from Kong Skull Island, even if it was just a brief scene. Even Ashiro Serizawa's sacrifice was pretty well done. There's things to appreciate here, it's just there's some really dumb things in there as well. It feels like they were prioritizing the stuff of the monsters, and don't get me wrong, the monsters are breathtaking in this movie, it's just the human side is important too, and I wish more people saw that. You know why Jurassic Park is so awesome? No, it's not the dinosaurs, although they're pretty cool too, it's the characters. They're so great. Part of the wonder and the whimsy of that movie is that the characters feel so real and relatable. You feel the same things they do when you see the dinosaurs. If the characters sucked and were poorly written, the dinosaurs wouldn't have felt nearly as impactful as they are. Another thing that helps is the great acting. Look at Ian Malcolm here. And because the characters are so great, we care more when crap hits the fan. We're not given that time in King of the Monsters because crap hits the fan almost instantly. And again, there's a lot of dumb things in the human side of the story because the filmmakers were more interested in the monsters. The filmmakers are putting a lot of attention to detail and love into these monster parts, and that's great, but I wish some of that same love went into the human parts as well, because if so, it probably would have been the best Monsterverse movie, no joke. But as it stands, King of the Monsters is good, I really like it, it's a fun watch, but a few flaws in the story hold it back from being one of not only the Monsterverse series, but just one of the Godzilla series all-time best. So one day, Kong's just vibing on Skull Island, right? And he finds out that there are more Godzilla movies in the Monsterverse than Kong movies. This makes him pretty mad, so he goes up to Godzilla and challenges him, and Godzilla says, okay, but prepare to lose, and then that's how you get this movie. Godzilla vs. Kong kicks absolute ass. I loved it. 
I think it goes without saying that the monster fights are awesome. This first fight with Godzilla and Kong on the boat is it's really it's just it's really cool there's no other words for it and it's probably the first godzilla action scene in the monster vest that's shot in the day and i like the characterization the monsters get godzilla looks angry and kong is a noble hero kind of even the human stuff was pretty good millie bobby brown is great as always brian brian tree henry is great as this conspiracy theorist and julian dennison played josh who he, well, he didn't have too much to do, but he was still entertaining to watch. Alexander Skarsgård plays Nathan Lind, who is essentially the main human character of this movie, and he's pretty good too. He's not as good as Mark Russell, who is essentially my favorite human character in the entire MonsterVerse, but he was still pretty good. Hey, speaking of good old Mark Russell, he's in this movie too, but he doesn't really have anything to do. It's uh, still cool that he was there, I guess. This movie also introduces Gia, a deaf girl who communicates with Kong via sign language. She was pretty cool too. So I don't really have an issue with the human characters in this movie, except uh, the villains. Let's start with Walter Simmons, the main human antagonist. He doesn't really have anything to do. He builds Mechagodzilla, says some villainous dialogue, and then he gets killed. Like, wow, great character. <laughs> I don't I don't really have too much of an issue with him. It's just, he doesn't have anything to do. I like the idea of this character, but he just walks around his lair and says villain dialogue. Ren Sarazawa had so much potential that they just threw out the window. They could have had this deep connection with his father, but no, they just mentioned that he's part of the Sarazawa family, and then he's just Walter Simmons' assistant. Maya Simmons is okay as a supporting protagonist, but then it turns out she was working for the bad guys all along, and she goes from an okay supporting character to generic villain. I mean, the human villains are fine, they do the job, it's just, this movie has Mechagodzilla. Like, who's gonna remember the human villains when you have Mechagodzilla? And speaking of Mechagodzilla, he is awesome. He's not as good as King Ghidorah from the previous movie, but my god, he just looks so cool. He has all these amazing gadgets. The final fight between Godzilla, Mechagodzilla, and Kong is, oh, I mean... If you're looking at this footage, I think you can kind of tell. And there's actually a lot of tension in the final battle. Normally Godzilla is pretty powerful, like he'll get hurt a bit, but you know, he'll eventually win. You, you, Godzilla actually gets quite beaten up in this fight. He gets thrown around, shot at, and it's only because Kong intervenes that Godzilla lives. And hey, seeing two of my all-time favorite movie monsters team up to defeat this warring mechanical beast was a satisfying ending. And my god, was Mechagodzilla's death awesome. Like, just look at this, dude. This is incredible. I would have preferred if Godzilla took Mechagodzilla down, as it would have, like, made more sense. It was like Godzilla taking down this evil doppelganger, like, yeah, that's right, you think you can replace me? But eh, ending was still awesome, so. And so, that's the MonsterVerse for awesome movies. I really like all of them. They're not without their flaws, but they're still really enjoyable. If I had to pick a favorite, I'd probably go with Godzilla 2014, as it's a film I feel very nostalgic about, and it also just is just a pretty awesome movie. <laughs> But, you know, they're all great in their own way, so. And that's that. Thanks for sticking with me. I know this is longer than most of my videos, but I hope you enjoyed. If you did, leave a like, subscribe, and if you want, leave a comment and tell me what you thought about your video about the video. Your support helps a lot. Well, anyways, um, that's it for me today. I'll see you another time. Goodbye.